Hello, everybody. Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Amaral. And welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. This is the show for instructional technology coaches. If you are a professional development trainer in your school district, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to episode number 16. Today, we are giving a chance for you guys to ask the tech coach yourself. Last week, we had a great time. We had a, our first roundtable episode where we had Mike and Sean and Carry On. We had a fantastic episode. We're going to get into that in a little bit here. And at the end, we asked you guys to provide some great questions things that have been in your mind things that might be going through your program how to fix it how to change it how to address some of those issues today is the day that we're going to be doing those q a's and we're going to be doing this probably around what would you say nick maybe maybe once every month or so we're going to stop and do a big q a definitely Uh, Just an opportunity to highlight some of the questions that come up often and uh, give an opportunity to address some of those concerns. Now, last week, Nick, uh, you weren't able to make it. You were off doing your own tech coaching thing. I want to hear all about the great work that you guys were doing out there on your Saturday program. But we had a chance to put together a fantastic roundtable. This is, again, one of those things that we're going to be doing here maybe once every month or so, um, bringing on tech coaches to talk about the stuff. And on our last episode, it was really, what does that first month look like? We talked about how a principal should be introducing you. We talked a little bit about how you introduce yourself to your staff, which of course was one of our topics of a podcast a few weeks back. And we also talked about something that kind of interests us, Nick. We came up with this concept of what is your title? And we decided that should we be called tech coaches or should we be called something different? Nick, what do you refer to yourself as in your position? Yeah, this is an awesome question to ask, right? And looking at these positions, so many of these positions have different titles. So I'm referred to as a district staff developer, uh, more specifically, (laughs) the district staff development coordinator. So big title. Um, and I think that plays a pretty important role. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, this tech coach versus, versus uh, digital learning specialist debate um, and some of the other titles that are definitely thrown out there. Now, we also looked at that, as you said, this whole concept of should we be tech coaches? And what we were saying there is that sometimes the word coach is a scary term. Nobody really wants to be coached, right? And right. Unless, of yeah. course, you're, 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 you know, you've got a striped shirt and a whistle. Now, the other thing in there is if we look at the title of digital learning specialist, that's kind of more acceptable, right? Like everyone's doing something digital. It doesn't matter what, but there's digital everywhere. Learning, of course, means I'm here to help you in the learning process. I'm here to help the learning happen. And it also doesn't take the... Oh, what's it is? It, it takes some of the firepower out of the curriculum people, right? Like if you say I'm a curricular coach or I'm an instructional coach, sometimes people want to bite your head off because sure. their point of view is you don't know my curriculum. Why are you sitting here trying to teach me how to teach the instruction that I've been doing for 20 years? Right. It also pigeonholes you, right? Like think about the title tech coach and how many times we get people thinking that maybe you're part of like ITC and you're only dealing with break fix type stuff, right? So this sort of kind of is a, is a balloon, uh, an umbrella kind of theory with the digital learning specialist. Like it's covering a lot of different holes. And, and uh, I, I like what you said. I like the key part, which it comes back to learning, learning for the teachers, learning for the students. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to enhance the learning that's going on in the classroom. Now, that doesn't mean, Nick, that we're going to change the title of this podcast, right? We're still Ask the Tech Coach here. I, I, still be Ask the Tech Coach. I, I don't think we're going to be doing Ask the Digital Learning Specialist, although maybe that's a sign that I have to buy another domain name for us, right? <laughs> No, definitely. But I don't think we have to change it. But I think, it, you know, the idea is there. I think people know what we're talking about. So, yeah, it's it, there's a lot of stuff in here. And, and, and again, all of that stuff that happened on the show last week on episode number 15 brought forth a ton of great feedback. Now, Nick, one of the questions that we got this past week was all about you know, teacher interactions. Right. And we had started talking about this two weeks ago of how do we interact? How do we keep our lessons? How do we keep our notes? Um we, we, we're, we're different on this, right? You, you have a method and, and I have a better one. And, <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your, 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 your method first. 
so you know keeping track of teacher interaction so i've i've played around with a couple different things i think for me it's just because uh i've just found this to work uh it's not too difficult is it the best option probably not i'm sure you're gonna you're gonna debate me here but just google calendar i love setting up the appointment slots and uh, and sharing that out um being able to manage it and just say that you know these people in your domain can access it that's a piece for me that i like as well um and you know the third party apps, not to say that they aren't good. I've played with them all. I think this is why I kind of shifted over. You can book me in a point Lee. One of the difficult things is if you're not using the premium version, not having the opportunity to uh, modify the schedule. And that to me was difficult, especially at a high school where your times aren't, you know, every half hour, every hour, and then you got the hallway sp uh, split time. That makes it really difficult to be able to create a custom schedule. Uh, and a lot of them don't allow you to do that. So um, Google calendars work for me in order to kind of mimic those those third party apps. Now, Nick, you've been a tech coach for a few years, correct? Yes. And I'm assuming that throughout those years, you've used Google Calendar. So if I looked at your Google Calendar, I'll see that you've been pretty busy. Pretty busy. Yep. How many times last year did you work with Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Smith. <laughs> and and, and, and right. this is this. And it's hard to find that inf that data out. I know what you're what you're saying. Yep. Right. And and so for this, I've been using Google Forms. Now that doesn't mean I don't use Calendar, right? Like of course, when, when I'm scheduling things, I use Calendar. When I'm working with teachers, I use Google Calendar. But there's no data points off of that. You know, yes. You can say, if I go up to the search bar and I type in Mrs. Smith, I'll find all my tr interactions with Mrs. Smith, assuming I've called them Mrs. Smith and not Susan Smith or something like that, right? right. So this is where I, you know, and this is a little bit where Nick and I kind of kind of differ here is I have a form that we're going to talk about this on a future show, guys, by the way. So I'll, I'll give you guys this form that I use. But essentially, it starts off with, you know, what did you do? You know, I was a coach. I was a conversation. We did email. And then it kind of goes into what building, what department, who it is. And it kind of takes you through this journey of what you just did. So that way, by the end, you've got, you know, 10 to 15 different, you know, data points of where it is. At the end of the year, I can say, Mrs. Smith and I worked together 14 times. The average time we worked together was seven minutes. I was in her classroom three times. We had 18 email conversations. Sure. These are the things that she and I talked about. And... You know, again, we're going to do a show on this. I'll, I'll certainly be putting out a blog post about this as we go through here in the next couple of weeks. But, but I, I got to ask, Nick, does that make sense? No, it does. You know, and, and one of the things I can do, I think, but, but I'm totally limited, right, is I can go into my Google Calendar. I can do a search. I can type in a name or a keyword uh, through the drop down and be able to search that way. So can I find how many times? Yeah, but you're right. I mean, now I've got to hunt for it. I do have to tally it up myself, right? There's no data that's being inputted. I got to go in there. I got to read it. I got to read the notes. What did we talk about? Um, whereas a Google form, like you're saying, is compiling all of that. Um, I don't know. Uh, devil's advocate, are we... Is it death by Google Form? I guess that's one of the things I'm afraid of because we use I'm using Google Forms for everything else. That would be one of my things. But but let me ask you. I mean, how have you found your teachers kind of utilizing the Google Form? Do they like that feature? Well, they don't even know that it exists. So okay. this is a form that I have. I stick on my home page of the iPad, of the of the phone. So in other words, after I'm finished with my teacher and I'm walking down the hallway or as I'm getting in my car. I take a few minutes and I fill out my little, re you know, let's call it a report, right? Whatever you want to call it. Gotcha. Right? And it's always, you know, it's always the top bookmark on my Chrome browser. So this isn't something that the teachers see. This right. isn't something You're that the, the teachers even yet. know about. These are my data points. Okay. This is also something that at the end I can sit back and go, hey, look, in this year I had 300 interactions at the high school or I had 500 interactions. Guess what? The program is growing. And, and that's how I'm using this data. I take the spreadsheet, I turn it into charts, I put the charts on a website, a website and yeah. so that way visually I see everything. And again, the teachers, it's not like I'm hiding it from somebody. And there are times where I'll open up this and I'll show, look, this is an example of how forms can use into spreadsheets, into charts, because you know I, I use those as examples for you know sure. even the higher level teachers. But I certainly don't go to a teacher and say, I'm keeping track of you. Because, right. again, nobody wants to hear that. But I just think 
it's a different philosophy. It certainly works for me. Um, and again, yes, I could use calendar too. But do you find yourself using? I mean, do, you know, do you have a place for them to also book you separately, oh, or are you finding that as okay? Yeah, um, I, I have a. I, I just want to clarify for people listening. Yeah, absolutely, as well. I have yep. a Google form where people can sign up for me. Now, most people in my district would prefer to email me. Okay. And my goal this year is to train them to use the form which is on our staff portal, which is there. So that way, again, it's keeping track of how many people have done this. You know, we don't use, yep. I, I don't use tech tickets. I, I have another way because again, I, I, everything's kind of already managed by the Google app system here. Um, sure. But at the same time with all of that stuff, if I'm walking down the hallway and I, I walk into Nick's English class and he goes, Hey, how about this? I'm not going to go to my calendar and put down that I spoke with Nick for three minutes. Right. Right. right? So then I, I feel like I'm losing all of these interactions during the day, but I sure. want to keep track of them. So that's Don't where, again, that, that form, you know, maybe I'll sit down for five minutes and I'll, I'll put in four or five teacher interactions. Right. But I'm not, I don't I, I just don't have the the bandwidth to do that in Google Calendar on my phone, and then you know I, I don't know how do you do it if if I find you in the hallway is that a calendarable offense or do you just say oh, look I'll just go to the next person and you know it's not a it's not an official appointment I'm not going to do it right now it's a good question and that's some definitely one of the struggles that I have is you know sometimes I, I uh, I'll park myself in a you know a media center and I'll have a couple of open hours or something like that or an open hour whatever it is uh, we'll treat it like an office hour and people can come visit and you know some people will stop by for five minutes um, hey quick question I was trying this out it didn't work or hey I'm trying to clear a Google form I couldn't get it whatever it is you know um, yeah I don't know you know that's one of the things sometimes I just say to myself, well, it'd be nice if I could keep track of it, but I mean, am I going to break it to try to just go ahead and find the time to be able to input? And you're, and you're right. You know, am I going to input a five minute interaction with a teacher? Um, so I want to, I guess the short answer is no. A lot of times I kind of just let it go um, and wait for the longer interactions, but you're, but I think the opportunity to be able to keep track of that, I think a lot of it's going to be dictated by a higher up. I think if someone was asking me for all of my interactions all the time, then yes, then I probably would go ahead and make the effort to say, you know what, even if it was a five minute interaction I had with the teacher, let me keep track of it. Um, but with the way it is, things are and the way I work with my uh, my administration and, and the interactions we have, I think those things were, um, I just seem like I'm able to kind of let them go. We want to know what you guys think out there. What are you using? Please let us know. You can find us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach, or of course, you can always email us over at feedback at teachercast.net. Nick, can we go? Can we go to another question here? Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, so Have you conceded at this one? Are you? Are you <laughs> I was, was going to say I won, but no, let's. No. Uh, <laughs> if we'll you think Nick has that. won this discussion, we want to know. <laughs> Ask the tech coach over on Twitter. We're going to do a little Twitter poll on that one. Um, um, all right. So we got another one, right? Yeah so, yeah, yeah. so what is it here? Best ways. What is the best, best way that you communicate with your teachers? With your teachers. Oh, you so can't many ways. say Google Calendar on this one, Nick. No, no, and I don't. <laughs> so, so what do you do? And, and, and maybe we can run the gamut here, okay? Yeah. Let's because, go through a lot of them because, all right, email, right? Email. Uh, so we send basic email out, right? Newsletters, tech tips, if you do that sort of thing. I think that's something. Um, I do that often. Uh, I try not to. You know, I think that's where the website comes in handy, trying to uh, mitigate the amount of email that's being sent out because we know how busy teachers are and they hate being bombarded with email. So that's one of the things I definitely have been trying to limit. Um, what about you? What's another one? Well, we like – newsletters but we also like them on a monthly basis right okay. so we kind of throw sure. everything into one big newsletter and i love the process because it makes it really easy we've actually been using google sites cool as, as a newsletter black. platform right yep. now we're going to talk about another newsletter platform that many people have used which is s'more s'mores right. are amazing i know many tech coaches out there use s'mores and and we certainly love s'mores we're using s'mores for a project we're going to be talking about in, in a couple seconds here you do. But, but there's a there's something about that, right? And and I think that the idea of taking Google Sites, the traditional news, uh, the traditional website builder, and looking at it as a newsletter design, it's pretty awesome. 
Yeah, and I love the way, like, you know, it streamlines your information, right? Being able to kind of... You can, you know, now they've got templates that you can use, and, you know, the pictures automatically go in, and you can add a calendar. Everything in there looks really nice. I mean, I tell you, if S'more and Google Sites got married, where you have a beautiful-looking Google Site, and then you've got that... You know, much like a Google form has the sent feature and you can see who's seen it and who hasn't seen it. I would love to get those things to marry each other. But doing that is pretty awesome. Now, the other things that you had mentioned here are Slack and Remind. And then you have learning management systems. Now, we don't use a learning management system. What, What do you do there? Yeah, so you know that's a ho- a big house for us. So we like to cultivate a lot through our learning management system, Schoology. Um, so I found that as a nice platform only because our teachers spend so much time. So I think one of my one of my goals has always been in how I work is to limit the amount of places that teachers have to go for inter- uh, information. And if they spend a lot of time in their learning management system, um, then I'm able to release the information through that. So that's been tech tips, that's been notifications. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I really miss about, you know, uh, our learning management system was it actually was integrated at, at, in the past with remind I wish that that still worked so I do have a remind account separate um, and I use that just so teachers know what building I'm in because I'm bouncing in and out so often instead of sending out and doing texts I mean this feels just like it and I can be on the go and I can be like hey I, I stopped in you know this high school high school number two and uh, if anyone wants to meet up, I have this time free. Just a quick, easy way. I will say, though, Jeff, I don't know if you've done any work with Slack um, at all. No. So this has been an idea that I've kind of been playing with. And I remember reading an article um, a while back about the, you know, using Slack to keep everyone in the loop of, of accomplishments. So I thought that was a pretty neat thing of it being like this open, old school kind of, AOL, I kind of remember like an AOL chat room style, um, but everyone's connected to it at, at all times and being able to highlight like staff accomplishments and things like that through Slack. I don't know, it was an idea I kind of had. I thought it would it would work with thoughts. You know, I would love to learn more about Slack. It's just something I haven't had an opportunity to play with yet. Okay. Um, but but you know there's so many different things and you know like we're all kind of friends with the the person who's in charge of slack for education um and it's interesting right i I would love to explore that as a topic or even even see some demonstrations on all of that stuff you know as you're talking here i'm reminded of our one of our co-hosts on the tech educator show josh who set up twitter to interact with if this then that and so he's got a twitter feed based off of geolocation so when he goes into a building it automatically pops a tweet that says you know mr mr josh is going into this elementary school or mr josh has left this elementary school and i'm thinking my goodness that's pretty innovative that's pretty cool because that would i'll tell you what that would save me a lot of time using remind you know and like posting when i walk into a room hey i'm in this building i have this time and i'm going to be out by this time you know that would hey if i could get if this then that to do it for me but but, uh, but, but i gotta ask doesn't that just bring up the question who cares right like you're, you're going to be putting a remind out to 100 teachers that says nick is in the building and they're going to go am i wrong here how important do you think you are that everybody needs to know what building you're in now i get it some people that's important to know right yeah i think you know, yep i don't know it's a tough debate i guess um I think because I haven't set myself and pigeonholed myself into being in a particular building at, uh, on a particular day. It was something I tried um, in the beginning, and I remember that as one of my probably first year gaffes uh, being a tech coach was saying to myself, you know, oh, on a Monday I'm going to be in this building, and on Tuesday I'm going to be in this building, and we'll alternate, and the next week we'll make up the day. I found this to be, look, I'm going to shoot to try to be in these days, but. I just want to be more open. So if that is an opportunity to get into your classroom and I have to run over to another building, um, you know, I'll do that. And when I get into that building, I want kind of I just want a way to let people know on the fly that I that I've, I'm there um, if opportunities arise so that people who think, oh, he's not going to be here um, and I happen to be there. I want them to know about it. So I don't know if it is working. It's a great, the great great question um i do have some teachers that reach out through remind um i definitely know i have a handful that that view it is it doing anything you know i I don't know it's great debate 
So, Nick, that kind of brings up our next question here, which is the use of social media. Now, many tech coaches are using social media to showcase what's going on in the classrooms. Sometimes a tech coach might walk into a teacher's room and take a picture of a project or of, a, of, a, of something happening that's wonderful. And you know, unfortunately, it's usually a digital thing. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the tech coach is using it as a, another platform for giving PD, right? What's yeah. your philosophy on using social media? Do you have a tech coach account or are you always um, your – regular professional Twitter account? Um, I am always my regular professional Twitter account. I've kind of gone back and forth with that idea. Um, I just think that I already kind of have a group of people that, that follow and stay in the loop as, and I, believe in the fact that as long as i keep it for professional work and it hasn't been overtaken by a by personal me um so it is in no way shape or form a personal account it is all professional for work uh, regardless of the district that i work for i just found that to be the professional my professional way to kind of do it um but i love using twitter i will say and i just love it being an opportunity to highlight classroom accomplishments regardless if it's teachers or students um and that's just been a go-to i know a lot of teachers follow it and i just love it when they're retweeting and commenting on it because it's a way to kind of spark the fire and the interest in in other staff members and then get them talking about it especially when you follow up with a twitter chat or something else like that it's just a great way to promote what's going on in your building build a personal brand and social media certainly over the last couple years is is, it's evolved Mm-hmm. Right. But it, it really has evolved to whatever you want it to be. You know, sure. we started off with our Ask the Tech Coach Twitter feed as really just a way to share information that we're doing here on the network. But recently it's become more of a community and it's a community that we want you guys to be involved in out there. Join us on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. You know, in addition to following us on TeacherCast or on, on Nick's uh, Nick, what's your Twitter account? Uh, and Amaral EDU. Absolutely. And, and we've been using this Ask the Tech Coach to really get this, this community. Nick, recently we put together a Twitter list of tech coaches. Now, a Twitter list is, of course, a specialized group where you can only look at or follow people that are on that group. Now, you don't have to follow technically everybody that's there, but if you follow the list, now you can see everything from a specific group of people without cluttering your main Twitter feed. So we've been finding great tech coaches that are out there, putting them on this tech coach list, and we are going to do a post on it and share the links and stuff like out there. But if you go over to Twitter and go to our Ask the Tech Coach Twitter feed, you can check out the the list there. It's our only list right now. But uh, we've got about 30 or 40 tech coaches on there, and it's growing into a nice little list because i gotta tell you i've been following it getting ready for this school year there's a lot of great things but you know what nick if you're a tech coach out there and you're looking to find resources maybe you're finding it hard right maybe you're sitting there saying there's a lot of places that i can go i can go onto facebook i can go onto google search i can go onto twitter i can find all these different hashtags it's really ridiculous to do that there's got to be a better way for me to find all of these different things nick do you ever find yourself sitting there in the in the 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 black hole of twitter going "I, i i gotta find something but i just don't know what it is or even the quality of what it is yeah absolutely because you just don't know you don't know how it's being used, right? Like you can read up on it, you can get a feel for some of my things, uh, but but you don't know. You don't know about the district, right? Which is another piece. You know what what's the culture that it's been implemented in? That dictates a lot. That, that that for me that does. I mean, I know that the tools I bring in and how they're being used might not be the same way for for a majority of other people because how we do it in you know in our district in my buildings might be different. So um, that's a that's a thing for me. Um, I know I love making connections with people that to me is a big thing and i love you know reaching out to you and other tech coaches um i know that's gonna uh, one of the reasons we're doing you know we'll probably hint on it in a little bit but just the whole um the mastermind idea i think that's just another powerful piece for us well 
because we have this passion for working together, and you know, we, we said it from the beginning of this seven years ago, TeacherCast is a place for teachers to help other teachers, but recently it's become a place for tech coaches to help other tech coaches. We are creating just that. We are creating a group of tech coaches, a team, if you will, to come together a couple times a month and really share resources, share experiences. We are creating our Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind, an exclusive group made Made up of technology coaches that is here to help out each other. Now, all you need to do to find out more information about this is to go over to teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind. That's teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind. Now, I urge you guys to do this soon. We're looking for about 15 to 20 tech coaches to get together for this program. And I'll tell you, Nick, recently we put it out for our first newsletter. We had over 40 tech coaches answer the call and say that they are interested in this program. 40 tech coaches are already interested. Nick, that is pretty awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it's great to see. I mean, it just shows you, right, that a lot of other tech coaches are feel the same way that we do. They're passionate about their position. They want to learn more. They want to see what other people are doing. They want to hear how they're doing the things that they are in their district. Um, it's a particular position, right? We wear so many hats, so let's just hear it from uh, someone else's uh, voice. Let's hear what they have and, and let's share the, and bounce those ideas back and forth. Teachercast.net slash Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind. You're probably out there asking another question that says, what do I get for signing up? What is this program all about? Well, first of all, you're going to have membership in an exclusive team of tech coaches. Again, we're going to choose about 15 to 20 people and figure out what we can do together to help each other out. If you're looking around and going, how do I find out the best way to survive this school year? This is the group for you. We're going to give you guys peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, the opportunity to sit back and work with us one-to-one -one or in a group is invaluable. We're going to be doing two monthly video collaboration meetings, meaning we're all going to get together twice a month and we're going to say, what can we do to work together to help us out? We're also going to give you some very interesting exclusive things here. We're going to be doing a mastermind exclusive free set of lesson plans to help you and your teachers. Now, these are going to be things that Nick and I are going to be making up, but also give you guys the opportunity to share your lessons. Maybe you're doing something with animation. Maybe you're doing something with Flipgrid, we're all going to be here to contribute to creating a great place to share the lessons. But that's not all. You're also going to be receiving free templates. Now, maybe you've noticed in the last couple of weeks, TeacherCast has been giving out some pretty awesome templates. We did one for our editorial calendar, for podcasting show notes. We've been giving one out for our trifold brochure. We got a lot of these templates that have been stored up we're going to give those to you as an exclusive for being a part of that mastermind. The whole idea behind this is to have a positive place to go, but that's not all. We are here to announce that there's two more bonuses. We're going to be doing bonus episodes of this podcast here of Ask the Tech Coach, maybe one or two a month, where you guys can have an opportunity to ask the questions that you want and really, you guys are going to choose the topics that we're going to be doing here. So maybe you guys choose a topic. Nick and I are going to put a show together, bring on some tech coaches, and provide that content. That's only going to be available to people in our mastermind. But that's not all. We're also going to be writing exclusive blog posts for that opportunity. Things that we really can't put out in public on the TeacherCast site. We're going to be sharing them, our little tips, our tricks, maybe some of the things that hurt us during the year that we don't want anybody else to know about if you're a mastermind member you're going to have that but nick that still isn't everything you're going to get because you're also going to get membership to our brand new tech coach facebook group where you're going to have an opportunity to grow join the community interact with everybody and really learn how to be a good tech coach that's exciting. Uh, and it's great to hear that there's so many people interested in that. And I think, you know, hopefully we've built something that uh, people will find valuable, that tech coaches will find valuable. Um, but I think we've also tossed the uh, we've tossed it around. Right. It's not just tech coaches. I mean, if it's teachers who are thinking about moving into this position. Absolutely. Um, it's people who just want to keep learning. And maybe this is an interest or a hobby or something like that, that they're interested in. Um, that could be a teacher. And it doesn't mean you have to be moving into a tech coach position um, or a digital learning specialist or staff developer. Absolutely. Right. I think all of those titles will, will be included in this. So and I'm glad uh, you mentioned that because we have we actually had a few people this week, you know, email. Right. Us, I want to be a tech coach 
or a digital learning specialist. What do I do? What does that resume? I mean, we're going to do a show when it comes down for, for, you know, for resume season, you know, sometime in January, February, March or so. We're going to do a show all about how to get past those things, what to do in an interview. What do you do if you're in an interview and they don't see the monetary value in what you bring? There's a lot of different things that we're going to talk about down the road, but you have the opportunity to do that. Go to teachercast.net slash ask the tech coach mastermind. Sign up to learn more about it. We're going to be starting this program in October, which is only a few short weeks away. We are looking to put together a great group of tech coaches. Does that include you? All right, Nick. So we have one more question here that we're going to be bringing up here. This is the biggie, right? This is the one that people want to learn about. This question is, you've been doing this for a few years. I've been doing this for a few years. What do you know now that you wish your rookie tech coach self knew? (laughs) Uh, To take it slow. Because I think we walk into this position and uh, we kind of highlighted this, I think, one of our previous podcasts, the idea of just moving a little bit too fast and wanting to do everything right at the beginning of the year. Um, I know we talked about building relationships and everything like that. That was a big piece. Um, But for me, just time to play and time to allow the teachers to play with things um, and not be the one that has to be giving them all that information. The same thing we do with students, right? We want to take a step back. That to me has just been an, uh, an important piece, invaluable time to let teachers play and collaborate because that's something they just want so often. Um, and, and, and they take so much away from it. I, I think it's finding the ways to bring that up, right? Cause again, if you're right. introduced as the tech coach, that doesn't equal Oh, I can have fun with this person. I can learn from right. this person. I can, I can make a friend out of this person, right? We haven't really talked yet about, you know, teacher sure. coast as a friend, like, hey, let's go out and get a drink or something like that, right? But, right. but there, there's that line there, right? You're, you're an administrator. I'm not. But we share the same job description, essentially. Absolutely. Right? You just get a chance to work in July and August. Never, never mind about that stuff. <laughs> but, but when it comes to that stuff, it really is the, okay, how do you do that, right? Because we can sit here, look, we can sit here on this podcast and talk all about what you should do, but nobody walks in each other's shoes. Nobody is in the environment that we are each in. Right. Absolutely. And so it's the, I wish I knew how to do the things I'm being told to do. Because there's not, again, kind of sounds silly, but there's nobody else there to show us how this works. And you can't really go to the teachers and say, why aren't you doing this? Why isn't it automatic? And you can't go right. to the principal and say, uh, it's not working. Definitely. And that, that I'll tell you, that has been another big one for me. Um, and I think making that a goal these past probably two years has been as much as you're going to find and as much as you want to do those things as a tech coach of this, you know, of what you found on Twitter and Facebook groups and whatever, all the stuff that you've been researching, if it's not organic to your building and your teachers and your, and your district, then it's not going to work the same exact way. And I think you're kind of hinting at that. You're kind of saying that same exact thing that, you know, we need to find what's going to work for the people that we're going to work with. What are their specific needs and how are we going to meet them? If nothing else from this show, guys, I want you to take that sentence. What are their needs and how are we going to meet them, right? It's not your job to save the world. It's not your job to solve all the problems. It's your job to figure out what does that specific teacher need and how can you help them achieve that goal? Wouldn't you say that that's the number one? If there's if there's a job description, sure. that's it. That's it. I think that would summarize what we're trying to do here with our positions. You know, I still want to ask the question here, Nick. How do you do that? Like, where do you find that? Where, what, what, what? Here's my question to you, right? Like, okay, this is the Q and A. This is this is Jeff's oh. turn to ask because we, we've been talking about this, right? Like, where do you get your resources, right? I, I know for me, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But like, where where does Nick go? Where, what what's what's on your bookmark list? Um, I, a lot of blogs, you know. I I think for me, it's so much of the stuff that I want to do and I and I implement. Um in my classroom when I taught or with teachers has just been through outside the box resources, you know, reading stuff on, um, uh, articles about artists or whatever that are doing some creative things. And I try to implement them with my teachers or, um, an English blog of a teacher who did something really, really cool. And I figure out a way that we can implement that uh, with all teachers. Um, obviously I go to ISTE, I look at the ISTE standards. What are things that teachers kind of need to know? Um, how do I kind of meet those goals and things like that? Um, my biggest has always been 
people though, you know, reaching out to other tech coaches. I have a close knit group of people I like to reach out to, um, you know, you being one, um, a guy, you know, uh, Steven Rayo down by me, who's been great. He's a Schoology uh, mastermind and, and guru. Um, and just that, just forming kind of a niche, a, a group and, and being able to bounce ideas off of. You know, for me, it really is about finding those relationships. You know, the whole yep. idea behind doing the Teacher Cast podcast seven years ago was I have a question or somebody has asked me a question and you know, let's find people who know that answer and put them all in the same room or podcast. Sure. And that's been that, that is right there. The definition of teacher cast. Like, let's figure out a way to answer this question over the course of something. And oh, by the way, it's recorded. Right. right. I like to use Twitter for things. I also like to create my own groups. I mean, you and I have created a a New Jersey tech coach group where we get together once a month or so and we yep. have discussions and we share best practices and we commiserate with each other and then but we also have a chance to see each other at the different conferences that, like that um yep. You know, and it's easy to say, okay, who are the big Twitter accounts to follow? You know, I, I love the work that Richard Byrne is doing. Mm -hmm. I love the work that Casey Bell, I love the work that Alice is doing. I love the work that Carrie Gallagher, who we just had on the show, is doing. There are lots of great people, but it really does come down to what do you need and how can you find all of that stuff out? I mean, I always find the biggest resource is ourselves. What can we do to figure it out? You know, yep. I had a teacher ask me a question and I said, all right, let me figure that out. And that's how I came up with building a template for the trifold brochures that, okay, one teacher liked it. Many teachers like it. Now I'm finding globally teachers like it. And if you can put that together for yourself, if you can put that together for your, for your staff, I think you're going to have a good year. Yep. And I think that's a powerful piece and definitely, you know, making those connections and, and it goes back to what we said before, you know, what is a specific need that the teacher has and you're going to take it upon yourself to find an answer to that need to, to, to meet it. And if that means reaching out to someone else who we know might be a professional in that field or that area, then so be it. Then we're the ones that maybe help that teacher make a connection now with that person, or we do the legwork, we go out to that person, we find the answer, we bring it back to the teacher. And if nothing else, we create an answer ourselves. Now, Nick, on our next episode, we're going to be moving away from the Q&A format, but we're going to be bringing up a, su a subject that people are, are very much talking about. It is time to talk about that professional development process, right? It, we're going to be looking at this from, okay, what does that Monday meeting look like? What does that faculty meeting look like? What does that department meeting look like? Nick, when we're talking about professional development sessions, what are some of the topics we're going to be hitting next week? Yeah, I love this one. So we're going to talk about how to pick a topic, uh, prepare a topic, present a topic. Um, what sort of resources do you give out? And then how do you make an I have to be here session, something where it's sort of mandated and it feels like it's tedious for everyone. But how do you make it enjoyable? How do you make it engaging? I I'm sorry, I wasn't paying. I was looking at my watch to see how much more time we had <laughs> in the podcast. What was that again? how to make an I have to be here session enjoyable for everyone. And, and, and look, I'm sure if you're out there as a tech coach, you're going, all right, <laughs> I, I've been there. So even though next week isn't necessarily a Q and a session, we want to hear from you. Find us on Twitter at ask the tech coach. Leave me a voice message over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Please share your experiences here. Everybody can benefit from them. And also, uh, you know, you can email us over at feedback at teachercast.net. We want to hear from you. And also, we want you to be a part of our brand new Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind launching in only a few weeks. Sign up today over at teachercast.net slash Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind. Lots of great things. Lots of mastermind exclusives. Nick, where can we find out more information about the great work you're doing this year? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at namoraledu. Or you can go to my blog, read some of the articles. I got to update that, and it's time for a new one. But edtechforay.wordpress.com. And of course, in addition to all the great stuff over here at askthetechcoach.com, you can follow us on our main account over at TeacherCast, where we're doing lots of great stuff. We're still putting out how to make a podcast. We're putting out Google stuff. We just released the last episode of our Microsoft Education Community uh, series. We are doing so many different things. And Nick, in the last couple of weeks, we've done five or six. I can't remember. ASCD authors that have come on and we've got plenty more authors to come we've got great authors coming on to talk about their books throughout the the, the oh my goodness I'm going to say it Nick the fall 
fall <laughs> semester here. We yeah. want you to be a part of Teacher Cast. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. This is episode number 16 of Ask the Tech Coach, talking all about your questions and answers. And we want to, of course, say thank you for making TeacherCast part of your professional development. On behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury. And I'm Nick Amaral. Reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. Mm -hmm.